This review will take a quick look at a famous alien abduction, commonly known as the uh, Allagas uh, abduction. And outside of the Travis Walton alien abduction, it's the most prominent and well-known worldwide. It's quite a story. I won't be able to get everything, but I'll try to get the core of it in. Uh, one moment, please. Sketches to illustrate their experience. They often picture the strange beings they encounter, now known as greys. The most predominant one are the small gray aliens and taller gray aliens as well. The taller gray aliens uh, seem to be more in charge in the abduction scenario. The smaller gray aliens seem to be more uh, assistants or, or helpers. These are beings that are thin, have no hair, large heads, uh, very large black eyes, no pupils in them, just sort of opaque. Uh, no nose uh, to speak of, although there might be a little bump or a ridge there. Many abduction cases include a face-to-face -face encounter with greys. Among the most credible was the incident reported by four friends who took what was supposed to be an ordinary camping trip. To those who catalog such reports, this UFO encounter is known as the Allagash incident. In the summer of 1976, art students Charlie Fultz, Chuck Rack, and twins Jack and Jim Wiener traveled north from Boston into the wilderness of Maine. For nearly a week, the trip was everything they hoped it would be, a carefree escape from city life. On the fifth day, they and one they would later illustrate in their artwork. I remember being in the back of the canoe, paddling leisurely. The two twins were in the middle. Charlie was in the front. And I remember they were having a conversation, and I was focusing on, on the night and the lake and the water. And I began to feel observed. And then uh, all of a sudden, Chuck Rack, who was at the back of the canoe, said, uh, holy mackerel, what the heck is that? And um, I turned around and looked, and there was this huge, bright light uh, that was hot coming out of the trees. It seemed like it was rising out of the trees. At first, we thought, it, well, it's got to be an airplane or something, right? So uh, we watched it for a few seconds and realized that it wasn't an airplane because it wasn't making any sound at all. It was strange, very strange. It was a bright, luminous yellow-white and changing from that color in a very fluid, liquid kind of a way. And we were very, very fascinated. I, I was in a state of extreme euphoria, I remember, just feeling, wow, this is, this is fantastic. It was just alive and uh, when it was nearest us about a hundred yards away it paused and when it paused I said to the fellows I said I'm gonna shine the flashlight and see what it does the instant he flashed his flashlight this thing sent this beam of light out to us and we were in a 16-foot aluminum Grumman canoe which in the pitch black of night lit up like a Roman candle. We must have looked like this object just waiting to be approached on this lake. And all I can tell you is what was going through my mind was just uh, uh, exhilarating expectation. Just, this is fantastic. This is something we can communicate with. It, it's tempting to communicate with us. I was completely shocked, and especially shocked that it reacted as quickly as it did, which told us there was some type of intelligence about it. And uh, as soon as it, this light came out, this thing started moving, and so we thought, well, you know, this is real. This is really happening. This is not a figment of our imagination. I mean, we've got to deal with this situation 
now because within a few seconds this thing is going to be right on us. I wasn't even interested in this thing anymore other than I didn't want to be as close to it as I was. I remember um, paddling as fast as I could and Jack saying, it's getting closer, it's getting closer. And then it was gone. The next thing they remembered, they... And they were either doing um, things with my genitals or they were um, prodding me uh, with some types of instruments. Uh, there was an extreme feeling of malevolence. I mean, I was absolutely always felt terrified in this situation. For a time, Jim kept his nightmares secret. Then he confided in his brother. Jack Wiener's reaction was totally unexpected. So he starts telling me this, my nightmare, on the phone, and I go, holy mackerel, I've been having the same nightmares. What is going on here? Pond and seeing a spectacular light in the sky, then it came closer, far too close for comfort. Then it came closer, far too close for comfort. The next thing the men recalled was standing on shore. Only later would they suspect that something more sinister had taken place. Regression hypnosis revealed that the four friends had apparently endured a horrific episode known as an alien abduction. It began with the menacing approach of a UFO. One of the things I remembered uh, very clearly was Jack saying that it's, it's gaining on us. And I remember suddenly being enveloped in this tube of light. And I remember looking up, and I, I thought, I was thinking about, what the heck is that up there? You know, like, what's up there? And that took a few seconds, and then I looked back again, and Chuck Rack's gone. The last thing I remembered was having both hands on the side of the canoe, looking out at the water to see if Chuck was in the water, and then not seeing him thinking, oh my God, you know, where, where, what happened to Chuck? And then looking up, and then the next thing I remembered was this just intense feeling of almost like I was coming apart or something. That's the only way I can describe it. Then the next thing I remembered was uh, being on my back in this hazy environment, which was just like this nightmare that I've been having. All four friends seem to recall a similar traumatic experience. It's like ants have. Um, they could have been goggles for all I know, but um, and they had some kind of clothing on, like spandex. I became focused on this thing's hand and realizing that it was not a hand like ours at all. And this one had me by the wrist and he was holding my arm up and he had something else in his hand but it, I didn't like the looks of it and I remember thinking oh boy here we go I'm this is it I got five seconds to live they're gonna cut me open they're gonna dissect me whatever I just want to get out of here get me out of here it would take hours under hypnosis before the four men last thing I remember thinking was here we go I don't know what's gonna happen next but something is happening under regressive hypnosis, I remember the uh, uh, aliens trying to um, put me in the canoe. There was uh, one of them standing in the canoe over me, trying to uh, adjust my position in the back of the canoe, and another one was sort of waist deep in the water right next to me. And then uh, they tried to position Jim Wiener in front of me, but he's heavier, and they were having a hard, hard time with him. And then the other two were beamed right on land. And then Jim got out to join them. As their recollections took shape, the four men learned why their roaring campfire had seemed to burn out so quickly. 
To those who investigate abduction cases, it's known as missing time. Perhaps as much as three hours have passed. No hiding from the trauma of what had apparently happened at Smith Pond. As sensational as the Allagash incident may seem, it is simply one of the thousands of abduction cases that have been reported. Among UFO researchers, it is regarded as a reliable report with solid eyewitness testimony. Indeed, for those who have examined the case closely, it confirms that at least some people have come face to face with alien creatures. If you had the amount of evidence for the reality of the Allagash abductions for any other subject, any mundane subject, in a court of law, you could hang a person probably. But because of the bizarre nature of the case, uh, that's not going to happen. People aren't going to accept that uh, evidence, although the evidence is there. And that's the uh, story, and it's uh, quite an abduction case. And there's a lot of stuff on the internet about it. And let me get a final screen on here. I couldn't get everything in uh, because it was uh, be too lengthy to get everything in. But I got a hopefully got the core of it, and that'll do it. Let me get a final screen on here. <laughs>